So let's work a problem related to the basic definition of a function. This function that we're going to work with, actually we're going to work on a couple examples of functions, things that are functions and aren't functions. All of them are going to be defined from A to B, where A is the set with four elements, one, two, three, four, and B is the set with two elements, the elements two and three. The first thing we're going to look at is this. We're going to look at F which consists of the elements 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, and 1, 3. So here is a set f. And the question is, is f a function from a to b? So you can see that the first coordinate of every pair in f comes from a. So the first coordinates are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1. And the second coordinate of every element of f comes from b. It's either 2 or 3. But what we're asking now, is this actually a function? Is this a function from A to B? So we need to make sure we're careful about what we mean by a function. This is a function if, for every element in the set A, there's exactly one element in B such that A comma B is in F. Okay, So that is the definition of a function. For every element in A, there's just one unique value in the set B such that we have the pair a comma b in f. So that is the definition of a function. And that's what we'll apply here to determine if f is indeed a function or not. If it satisfies this, it is. If it fails to satisfy this, it is not. So sometimes when talking about functions, it's nice to draw the domain and the range as these two different sets and draw arrows connecting the two different sets. So the set a is a four element set, consists of the elements one, two, three, and four. And the set B is a two-element set consisting of the elements 2 and 3. And we can basically visualize the function by drawing this type of graph where we draw arrows from elements in A that go to elements in B. So since, for instance, the element 1, 2 is in F, that means we should draw a line from 1 to 2. Similarly, 2, 2 is in F, so we draw one from 2 to 2. 3, 2 is in F, so we draw a line from the element 3 in A to the element 2 in B. 4, 2 is in F, so we draw one from 4 to 2. And then finally, 1, 3 is in F, so we draw an arrow from 1 to 3. So if we were going to kind of graphically visualize this function, or what we think may be a function, this is how we would draw this relationship. And then from this graph, we can kind of more easily determine if it meets the definition of a function or not. So is F a function? That is the question we're trying to answer. And the answer in this case is no. If we look at this, we can see that this does not satisfy the definition of a function. And the reason it does not satisfy the definition of a function is because the elements 1, 2, and 1, 3 are both in the set F. So if you look at the defini definition of a function, it says for every A and A, there has to be exactly one unique B in B such that A comma B is in F. Well, we have 1 comma 2 is in F and 1 comma 3 is in F. So in this case, A is 1, right? It pairs up. We have a 1 in each of these case, cases. But the definition of a function says that for every A and A, we can only have a single B. Well, we have two here. We have the element 2 and the element 3. There's not a unique B in B. There's actually two values of B in B, such that A comma B is an F. So this violates the definition of a function because there is not a unique B. There are, in fact, two of them. <laughs> there are two Bs. So that's one way to think about it. Another way is just to look at this graph and see um, one of the, pro the problem point that violates this definition, and that's this point right here. Anytime that we have a graph like this and we're trying to depict a function, if there's any point in the left-hand set that has two arrows leaving from it, then this is not a function for the reason we just talked about. That means you'll end up at two different points in B, and we're only allowed to have one point in B. So anytime you see a set, and on the left side there are two arrows leaving one point, you know right away that this cannot be a function. All right, let's do another example. For this one, let's let f equal 2, 2, 3, 2, and 4, 2. Again, we can visualize that. So we draw an arrow from 2 to 2, from 3 to 2, and from 4 to 2, and we ask ourselves the question, is f a function? Well, again, if we go back to the definition of a function, we see that the answer, again, is no. And the reason it fails, in this case, it's different, but the reason it fails is because we have to have, for all a and a, there has to be a unique b. 
So looking at the picture we just drew, we can see that the point 1 does not have anything in B that it pairs up with. So this is the problem point. There is no arrow drawn from the point 1 to something in B. So again, when you draw these types of graphs, if you ever draw it, and there's a point that doesn't have anything drawn from it, then you know that the f cannot be a function. Okay. And finally, let's do one more example. Let's do 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, and 4, 2. If we visualize this with our diagram again, we draw from 1 to 2, we draw from 2 to 2, we draw from 3 to 2, and draw from 4 to 2. And we ask ourselves, is this a function? And the answer in this case is yes, it is indeed a function. For all A and A, there's exactly one B and B such that A, B is an F. You might wonder, you know, why is this not a problem? Well, if you notice in the definition, the definition doesn't say anything about having to cover every element of B. It only talks about having to cover every element of A. So having this missing point on the right side is not an issue. Everything on the left side is good. On the left side, every single point has an arrow coming off of it, and every point has only one arrow coming off of it. So this is indeed a function because we satisfy this definition right here.